Perfect. Who better than Derek, Pat, Andrew, the wrestling crew? Man, they about to put an end to y'all careers like a finishing move. They about to give y'all facts on these cats that's fighting on these mats. Y'all can't see them like John Cena. Even if y'all had 2020 vision, y'all better listen. Pay attention and take notes down and realize that it's not your time now. And watch these three kings take the crown. Hey, hey. By Pat and Derek. You. And you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at WrestlingIQ101 or WrestlingIQ101.com. And today our special guest is the Beast, Squ- Beast Squad. Monster Mac, Kyle the Beast, man. What's going on, guys? What up, guys? What up? Yeah, man. That's what scared you guys. I can't <laughs> even say Beast Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it out, Andrew. Beast Squad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn. Uh, before we start, I just want to thank you guys for the shout out when Arcadia was here and Colin was here. Uh, it was yeah. mad cool of you guys. Thank you very much. And Arcadia, he knows I love him too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you're very welcome. And thank you guys for coming back. Um, so let's talk about this, man. Jersey All Pro on the heels of a big event. Let's talk about this. What does it mean to each of you guys to have this show in Rawway? Oh, um, I mean, I just put it like this. I mean, I guess JPW after the last worldwide tape, you see that uh, TJ Marconi was probably one of the tougher opponents I've ever had, and I put him away. And it seems that I'm a pretty well-rounded athlete or competitor in JPW right now, and I feel. JPW management has put someone like the best in the world or the best in the world, Matthew Riddle, King of Bros against me, and I think it's a very fitting opponent for me at this point in my career. Yeah, man. For me, um, <clears throat> like you said, him and TJ absolutely destroyed life at that worldwide taping. Um, and so did Anthony Gangone and Jake Parnell and um, you know uh, Darius Carter, Mike Orlando. Uh, and you know, pretty much every match I was I was satisfied with that happened at the worldwide taping. But Beast the TJ, like, I mean, what you hear from me on commentary that was legit. Like, holy crap, this is amazing! Like, I legit when I said he kicked his face off his face, that was like a legit. You know what I mean, Steve Mag line. Um, it, it just they just beat the crap out of each other, and I love when guys are working hard, even if it's fifty people or. Two, two people, you know what I mean? And guys are going all out. And that's the guys that I want in my locker room. Kyle, the TJ, Gangon, Parnell. Parnell drove from Missouri or wherever the hell he's from in the Midwest. It was easily over 20 hours. And came in, drove, did his thing. I hooked him up with UWA. He also killed at UWA. Yeah, and good. then drove back. And he didn't do it for a lot of money. You know what I mean? That's why we're taking care of him this show. We're flying him in. Normally, he loves driving. Him and the Vikings have been driving for years from California to Maine to Mexico yeah. and every place in between. But And that was his debut yeah. with the Vikings. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That, that was you a know, crazy so, match. <laughs> and that, I mean, actually, that match that we put on Worldwide, that six-man, if I'm not mistaken, they had just driven from somewhere in the Midwest, too, the really? night before and had a show. I think it was like Chicago or something and came to JAP. So that sort of hustle and, you know, uh, I, I love that. You know what I mean? So, you know, we're... We, we're flying in Parnell, and we're taking care of him. He's been in battle of the light heavyweights. Gang going, same thing. Um, and, you know, I've said it for a long time. If I were to ever dra- have a draft, Kyle would be my number one pick. And you could see that what I mean, you know, what I say is what I mean, because I tried my best to make sure that he had Matt Riddle. Actually, I really, if we're going to speak honestly, I really wanted him and Michael Elgin. Wow. But Elgin wasn't available at the time. Riddle opened up. So we were able to pounce on Riddle and make sure that we had him locked down. And then afterwards, Elgin opened up and I was like, ah! <laughs> but then Schlack opened up and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, right. Schlack, you know? <laughs> Hell yeah! So right. if, if you if you look at a lot of these matches, they're matches that if I'm in a corner being a kid, you could see me, <laughs> you know, marking out like a little schoolgirl. And definitely Kyle Riddle is going to, I feel like, when Homicide and Key wrestled, they set the bar. They always, like, you had to match up to them. And I feel like that's what's going to happen with this match with Kyle and Riddle. They're going to set the bar for everything that comes after in JAP. So, you know, 
it, that's what I feel is going to happen. Like, that's how much faith I have in this match. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's kind of cool that I get a chance <laughs> to, you know, hook up somebody that I've had a lot of faith in. I believed in since pretty much day one that I mm-hmm. met this kid. And I get a chance to help him get to that next level. Hopefully, this gets eyes not just on JAP, but guys like Arcadia and Kyle and TJ that need that mm-hmm. little bit more of exposure to get to that next level of TV. Mm-hmm. Put him in there with Matt Riddle, who right now is the hottest free agent talent in the world. It's only going to elevate Kyle. Mm-hmm. And um, what, going back to the last one, we uh, spoke to TJ, and he said he was so amped up to be on the show. He's like, He said he spoke to you before the match, that he said, he was going to be stiff in the match. So I want to know, is this true? Like, talk about that a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong. What is TJ? 6'5", 6'6". Six, six, <laughs> six, six, what about 300 pounds coming easily after? Easily 320 now. <laughs> Big boy. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> definitely hits hard, man. <laughs> like, there's definitely some force behind every blow, uh, blow or kick he throws. Sitting, so, yeah. sitting there watching you guys there at the, the Holy Trinity Church, I thought the ring was actually gonna like break. You guys are hitting each other so hard. I like. I'm like, damn. Like, I hope these guys are safe. Like, in that ring. I'm like, besides beating each other up, I'm like, this might have like, like bad repercussions. Like, something bad might just happen <laughs> now. Like, just <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I think there's a show. There was a show afterwards too, and I'm like, I hope the ring will be okay. Like, because I'm like, you got, like you heard the thud and everything. What an incredible match that was. And you've been on a tear yourself, you know, at uh, SWF and. Uh, you just recently taken down uh, Brandon Kirk at day one. Yeah, at uh, Synergy Pro Wrestling. Yep. That which, was, uh, which was the best <laughs> match of the night. I'll <laughs> definitely you. say that for sure. Thank you. It was killer. Do you get tired of that when people tell you? No. <laughs> that was the I mean, best match. Definitely was the best match. That means I'm doing a good job, mm-hmm. I guess. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, definitely. Hey, yeah, but, Kirk's good. He's, he's got a little bit of a mouth. He's good, though. That's cool. When everybody's young, they all have a little bit of a mouth. That's one thing about Brandon Kirk. He has a lot of potential. Yeah. If he keeps his head straight mm-hmm. and stays out of the dirt with you know people around him. Yeah. I said this to a couple of guys recently. When you want to be the best, the only way you become the best is by being around the best. It elevates your mentality. It elevates your attitude. And when you're around guys that are in the same position as you or lower... Now, I said this to Kyle, too. Yeah. Guys that are, you know, in your staying level or lower, they're not going to push you. All they're going to do is hold you and pull you and keep you from getting to that next level. Yeah. Brandon Kirk needs to be around guys like Kyle. <clears throat> he needs to be around guys like Arcadia. Guys who are motivated and focused and have that drive to succeed. And once he's around that, I think Brandon Kirk will understand more, you know, how this game works and what he needs to do to make sure that he doesn't get stuck as just an indie guy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah, you, I feel like you don't want to be stuck. I mean, speaking in mm-hmm. my opinion, I feel like you don't want to be stuck as the, Oh, I was the best little league player from baseball. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to be that guy. I want to be known as, Hey dude, that fucking guy killed him was the best in little league. And now he's probably one of the best in the world. Like that's the plan. Ultimately. Huh. You know? yeah. yeah. You, you definitely want to, you know, <clears throat> Go as hard as, I mean, otherwise, why are you doing it? You know, I, like, I know there's people that do it for money, and it's just, they're not as good. You know, they, some of them might have the fanciest clothes or, you know, some hot little chick, but to be honest, what's that going to get you? You know, I could have, uh, I'm just throwing a name out there. I could have a Helen Vale on my arm, and what's that going to get me? It's just going to be guys hating on me because I got a hot little, thing on my arm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. If I don't back it up in the ring, then what good am I? True. You know? And you have to you have to really motivate yourself every day to work hard. That's that's why I keep pointing to this guy next to me. You know, when he started, he was a chubby, fat, <laughs> like he was the kid that you gave wedgies to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like and when our, I remember Arcadia showed me a video of the two of them having a match and you know, he was trying, he wasn't the best, but he was trying. And then fast forward like five years later, and I see this motherfucker just jack the fuck up. And I'm like, what the hell's that? He's like, Oh, that's that kid, Kyle Smiley. And I'm like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> that kid was a little fat marshmallow. And he was like, no, not anymore. 
And like, at, even in the last year, I was talking to Homicide about it. The change in him in the last year is ridiculous. You just see it in his ring work and his physique and in his mentality. You see Kyle maturing in front of everybody. And it's kind of weird to talk about him in front of him like this. But, you know, <laughs> um, but like, I, I'll tell him to his face the same way I'll tell you guys, you know, he's got a lot of potential. He really has been doing everything he can to maximize that potential. And we need more guys like that. You know, if, you, if you're going to look at this as a military view, we need guys, soldiers like him, who are going to become generals. Because when you have just soldiers, they don't care. Once they see that you have no more power or your, you know, your respect is starting to go down, they're going to go on to the next bigger and better thing. You don't want guys like that. You want guys like him that they're going to listen to you now because they know you know what you're talking about. But then when the time comes that they're leaders, they're going to knock it farther than you ever did. You know what I mean? And that's what you need to see for more guys on the Indies today. You don't see that. You see a lot of guys. How can I get the most dollar? What can I do <laughs> if I have to cut throat and I know that this guy's working for $200, I'll work for $150 so they use me more. And, you know, what's that really doing? You're not doing anything. You know what I'm saying? You're just, you're just being a scumbag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, have to, you have to throw yourself all in, but you have to be fair with yourself too. You know, and you have to be fair with other guys because we're all trying to make some money, but we're all, we all love this crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the base baseline of it. We all love this crap. So, you know, when I look at the guys at JAP who I have coming to work on the 21st, it's all guys that I feel have the same mind frame or could have the same mind frame if they're not there just yet. You know, and even with the women, like look at Lefisto. Yeah. Lefisto, if anything, she should have retired a few years ago. She's been messed up for a long time. I know that she's been upset that a lot of people are getting on TV that above her. You know what I mean? People that aren't as good as her, aren't as dedicated. And they keep getting the, these TV shots. And I know it's frustrated her because she said it out loud publicly on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. But that doesn't stop her from working out. That doesn't stop her from working hard. She's a champion everywhere she goes. That's why she's part of JAP. Because she, she has that mentality. She has that attitude. It's hard to find, but once you find it, you're like, Hmm, let's make some noise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. One one thing when it comes to, to booking, one thing I know just like from talking to you, like, you know, whenever I talk to you, um, <laughs> it's just like you could tell, like, even though like you're you're literally like a legend when it comes to wrestling, but it's like you're still a fan at heart. So it's like when you put these matches together, it's like shit that like we're just like, damn, I, like, I would have put that together. Like, Kyle Beast and Matt Riddle. Mm-hmm. It's like, damn, that, like, yeah, that's like fantasy brother. booking right there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so do you, like, like, what do you put into, like, when it comes to, like, booking? Like, what are, like, some of the things that you, you look for? So, I mean, JP is in a different position right now. We're not running every month like we used to. Uh, we're running quarterly as of right now. And I think 2018 isn't going to change. We're either going to run three or four, five times the most next year. Um, and that's not including worldwide if we do more worldwide stuff. Um, but I have to see what's available to me. And when I say that, I mean, like, what guys can I put with my guys that will elevate my guys? So that's what I'm always looking for. How can I elevate my guys and get them seen on a bigger spotlight? So when we originally had booked October 7th as the JAP date, when I reached out to people, everybody was already booked. And I was like, how is this possible? It's July. You guys are all booked October. Everybody tells me, oh, I don't book uh, more than two months out of, you know, in advance. And I'm like, Indies are dead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, but it's July. October is five months. How is this possible? So they, you know, uh, when I spoke to Jeff, the, the guy who owns JP, I was like, look, I can't get anybody. Everybody's booked. Um, nothing is out there that's worth putting our guys in there with. Nothing will elevate our guys. We need something that's going to elevate our guys. The other thing was, after the 20th anniversary, I didn't want to use Homicide, Low Key, Me, Moff. I didn't want to use any of the old JP guys unless it meant something. You know, um, I mean, we could easily throw Low Key in there with whoever. You know, what's it going to do to whoever we put that in there with? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not going to do anything. I mean, low-key does elevate people. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But we're just going to throw it out there. It's not worth it. You're not going to draw a dime. Now, if we build up Kyle the Beast for a year, we got a little bit of tease of low-key and Kyle. 
but we built him up for an additional year. By the time that year comes up, if he's still available, not under contract, when we put him and Loki together, more people are going to be like, oh, this is going to be nuts. <clears throat> and you get more value out of your product that way. So I'm also looking at it from that side, too. How do I get the most value out of the product that I have? And, you know, with the resources that I have. But, you know, when, when I moved the date to October 21st, I had all these openings. I was like, oh, yes, all right, now let's play some ball. But again, like I said, the one that I wanted was Elgin versus Kyle. Elgin hadn't, he didn't know if he was available from New Japan yet. He couldn't find out until it was the beginning of August. So I was like, oh, Riddle came up. I was like, oh, I already know who Riddle's going up against. When Elgin opened up, I was talking to Homicide. I was like, Elgin opened up. We're going to get him. All right, cool. Who do we put him with now? I don't want to put a three-way. We have the Battle Light Heavyweights. We have a women's match that's a four-way. I don't want to have too many multiple man matches. We want to have where he can elevate somebody. Who can I put him in there that can elevate, be elevated? And <laughs> Homicide's like, well, I don't know if we can elevate someone, but what's the craziest match you could think of right now? And it just so happens, I was talking to Montrop about Schlack literally about 10 minutes before this phone call. And I was like, what about Schlack? <laughs> and I was like, Oh, <laughs> just like that. And I was like, oh, that's a good, that's a good sound. <laughs> I mean? So I was like, all right, well, let's work on that. And it, it, what's funny is because Schlack is a very hard person to get a hold of. He's, he's all over the place. But crazy he's <laughs> legit, <laughs> is, legit is. But I kept reaching out. I was like, I need to know if you're available to Toy I need to know. He's like, ah, I'll get back to you. I got, I, I'm going to be going somewhere. I don't know. I, I'll get back to you. And it was like three weeks. And then finally, I had to tell him what I had because I didn't want to tell him until he committed. And when I finally told him, he was like, oh, I'm available. <laughs> I was like, damn it, Schlack. <laughs> you know, but like he knows. He When I told him right away, and when I told Elgin too, Elgin was like, oh, that sounds interesting. You know what I mean? Like there's a little bit of buzz about Schlack right now. I feel like after the Elgin match, if it goes the way we think it's going to go, there's going to be a lot of bit of buzz about Schlack, and that's what I want. You know, Gresham and Arcadia, that's another match that, like, I feel like that's Arcadia's chance to step up and show everybody that he can go in there with world-class athletes. You know what I mean? It's been a while since he's been tested. He needs to be tested again. He needs to show everybody. It's one thing to have the new attitude with Colin West as your mouthpiece. Yeah. It's another thing to have something to back it up, and that's what he needs. He needs that win or he needs that fight to back it up and say you know what i mean talking about colin west how was it working with him on uh, world worldwide because <laughs> you guys so so there's a lot of outtakes and it's a lot of it me laughing at him because he's a very funny dude um he's one of those guys like a lot of times you think he's saying things for shock value and he's being serious <laughs> you know what i mean so that that makes it even funnier to me you know um a lot of i got a lot of good feedback on our chemistry yeah so you know we might do some more stuff together in the future um honestly speaking and i said this before to a couple of guys but when arcadia approached me with the idea of having colin west i was like bro you could talk you're funny you don't really need to have a mouthpiece if it was somebody else then yeah but you, you you're good i think he was and he said he was like no you know we have a lot of good ideas and the thing is, my moves are always going to keep me over, which is true. When he hits that drop kick to the back of the head, yeah. it's like a gunshot. You know what I mean? And it's one of those things where it's like really pretty because he's so high up and he's so long and so lanky. And then, bam, go to sleep. You know what I mean? And... Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but the people always pop for it. Yeah. You know it's like I mean? a match is brewing here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they go back to when they were kids. So. Um, but, you know, so he knows that the, the crowd was going to pop for his moves and his stuff in the ring. Colin West is somebody that they really don't know, but they know enough when they look at him, they don't like him. I mean, he's wearing a pink jacket. You know, yeah, they, like, yeah. I do not want to rip that off and shove it down his throat. <laughs> and then he starts talking. And then he's one of those guys that he knows he's smarter than a lot of people. And he's not afraid to let you know that he's smarter than you. So when people hear that, it just becomes that, I hate you from the bottom of my guts. 
and I hope everything bad that happens happens to you and only you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like he's got that kind of hate going towards him. So it works. I like the way, you know, after watching them, because Arcadia wrestled a few times um, on other shows defending the title with Colin, and um, <clears throat> I watched everything, and it worked perfect. So it's one of those things I'm glad I didn't say no to and was strict on. I was just like, let's try it and see what happens. And, you know, he's he, they're showing me that it's, they were right and I was wrong. And that's fine. You know, that's cool. When I take his pay away, his <laughs> <laughs> boss, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Colin is funny because he'll, he'll, like, you're right about the he's smarter than everybody. He'll, like... He'll get in arguments with people on Facebook, and he's, like, correcting their grammar while he's arguing <laughs> yep. with them. So yep. it's, it's, like, freaking hilarious. <laughs> but when it comes to, like, Arcadia, too, like, like Arcadia and Kyle Beast, like, I've seen you guys have, like, amazing matches. And it's, like, like I, I believe even one time I was, like, like WWE needs to, like, make a rivalry series on, like, YouTube because, like, <laughs> the matches are, like, fucking amazing. They're, like, they're great. But it's, like, like YouTube, I remember I saw you guys wrestle at uh, UWA Elite, and I was just, like, and I, like, never did this. And I, like, got on Twitter. And I was like, yo, WWE, Impact, whoever the hell, like, needs to sign these guys, like, today. Like, like I'm a Arcadia Mark for sure. And Kyle DeBee's, like, just, like, from, I told you before, like, I knew you were Andrew's boy. And just, like, seeing you evolve the same way. Like, you are a beast. Like, yeah. like say, that's the perfect, like, word for you for sure, man. Kind of reminds me of, like, Del Wilkes. Because he was a big dude and he just does these amazing things and man, you just fly around there <laughs> and like you're a big dude too like and it's just amazing like you know uh, like the last year just watching your matches man have been crazy from UWA to SWF I've been there so it's just amazing to see uh you're growing even better than you know anybody expected right even probably yeah I mean you expected when you started right this year I mean it's probably been my most uh, the busiest year I've ever had and I feel with that each match I do grow and um, <clears throat> speaking of like matches to date and pushing limits or something like that uh, and, uh, and of Arcadia me and him had a 30 minute Ironman match at the Middlesex County yeah, Fair that was incredible. and that was definitely like my furthest limits I've ever been pushed in a match for and against Arcadia you know what I mean he's great he's just an athlete so yeah it was awesome that whole show at the fair was just incredible too. I mean, just yeah, you know, uh, it just seems like every match on UWA, just the matches just get better and better. And you're like, how can these guys top it? But then somehow you guys just found the way. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't watch the, I didn't want the match to end. I was like, I know you guys are probably spent. But I was like, Dude, maybe we go like another like. <laughs> another I, half I, an I, hour so. more. I, I, I don't know about uh, Arcadia. <laughs> <laughs> He's old. <laughs> Man, no, I, that was I incredible. Can, I can wrestle with Arcadia for everybody. He's a great, great opponent. Yeah. Now, with when it comes to like, um, kind of like the rebirth of like Jersey All Pro Wrestling, so like, how do you want fans to like to like look at this version of Jersey All Pro Wrestling? Like, is it supposed to be the rebirth? Is it a continuation? Is it something completely new? Like, how how do you picture this version of Jersey All Pro Wrestling? I see it more like Chapter One ended. This is Chapter Two. Um, it's not the end of anything other than that first era of guys won't be on as much, like I said, because I really want the younger guys to get their chance to shine, just like we had the chance. I said it on Worldwide, when it, when we first started JP, Fat Frank all, gave us all an opportunity. A lot of companies weren't using us, a lot of companies were afraid to use us, didn't know how to use us, didn't know what to do at all with us. So Frank gave us a, a huge opportunity to take the company and put it on our shoulders and run with it. And I always felt as though no matter where, where I go in this business, part of the reason why I help out so many young guys is because I want to pay back what Frank gave to me and what this business gave to me. And that's helping them get opportunities to become bigger and better stars. Um, not everybody deserves it, but there are some guys that, you know, <clears throat> truly work hard. And I, like I said, I feel there's a lot of potential in a lot of guys, guys that could do, you know, carry a company and go to TV and carry a title on TV and go international. And, and, you know, I always feel like JP, that's the one thing that we were famous for the most. We created stars, guys like Jay Lethal, like Moff, like Homicide, like Mossman, like Loki, 
that's where all the stars were created. They all went to Ring of Honor and blew up there, but they were their home is JAP. Yeah. And I always felt like we should be continuing that tradition. For a while, we got away from that because we were just using the name talent in the area. Or, you know, if a WWE guy that was really good or a Japanese guy that was really good came down, we just threw him in there. But now that it's like, it's almost like I got a brand new canvas to play with. I'm really just filling in the old spots that we had already and then adding a couple of new ones. And I'm not trying to be like, this is going to be Steve All Pro because it's not. It's not just me that has any say. There's other guys. I'm the guy that Hey, we should use Call the Beast. Hey, we should use Arcadia. Hey, we should use Private Party. I'm that guy. Everybody else decides what we're doing with them. Um, but in that same way that I'm that guy that's bringing in talent, they look at me as I'm the face because I'm the one that's going to all the different companies.